Because a plant in these conditions will soon show signs of nutrient deficiency, the amateur grower assumes he or she is not providing enough fertilizer. By increasing the dosage, the problem is compounded further. Water-soluble fertilizers, organic or chemical, can be flushed from the grow medium quite easily in case you have provided too much. However, once you've discovered that you have overfed your plants, the damage is usually already done. Overfed plants are evidenced by leaf tips that are burnt or curled under. Measures can be taken to avoid toxic salt buildup by flushing the grow medium once every few weeks. Salt buildup can be removed. Leach the soil by passing large amounts of water through it. This will rinse out unused fertilizers. Leaching is most easily done in a sink or bathtub. Make sure to use tepid water and slowly pour into the pot about three or four times the volume of water as there is grow medium. Furthermore, no fertilizer should be given to plants during the last two weeks before harvest. During this time, plants should be fed water only, or else fertilizer compounds may affect taste and burning qualities of the finished product. Ever tried to smoke a joint or fully dried bud that just won't burn? pH plays an important role in nutrient absorption. When pH levels are too high or too low, Roots can't absorb nutrients. Again, this can lead amateur growers to assume that plants aren't getting enough fertilizer. The pH scale measures the degree of acidity, or alkalinity, of a substance on a scale of 1 to 14. 1 is extremely acidic, 14 is extremely alkaline, 7 is neutral. Marijuana grows best when the soil is kept within the range between 6.2 and 7, but should tolerate the range between 5.8 and 8. Hydroponically grown marijuana enjoys a slightly lower pH range, 5.8 to 6.8. Don't underestimate the importance of a balanced pH. When levels are too low, acidic, nutrients get locked into acid salts and cannot be absorbed. With levels too high, alkaline, Salt will build up to toxic levels and roots will not be able to absorb water properly. pH testers are available at most garden stores. It is highly recommended that you purchase one, but beware of cheap testers, they are not always accurate. The first step to maintaining a healthy pH is to determine the pH of the water you will be using. Tap water is usually near neutral. If it is out of acceptable range, use an additive to adjust it. pH adjusting additives can be store bought, or you can use vinegar to lower pH or baking soda to raise it. Experiment a little first to make sure you know how much will be needed. Fine dolomite lime or wood ash can be used to keep pH in the soil from getting too low. Both can be mixed with water and poured over the grow medium or blended into the medium from the beginning. Use about a half cup of either for each square foot of soil. Let's recap what we've learned in chapter two on grow mediums, water and fertilizer. Use containers of suitable size and shape. Always start new crops with a new grow medium and consider what nutrients it contains. Use a grow medium with good water retention and drainage properties. Let the grow medium dry out slightly between waterings. Frequent misting will help keep foliage free of dust and bugs. Primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Take care not to overfeed plants. Flush plants with water every few weeks in order to leach out salt buildup. Never use any fertilizer during the last two weeks before harvest. Keep the pH levels of the grow medium between 6.2 and 7.
As with most plants in nature, marijuana goes through several distinct growing phases. It is an annual plant and completes its life cycle in one season. The three basic stages of its development as we will deal with them here are 1. Germination in seedling or pre-vegetative, 2. Vegetative, and 3. Budding or flowering. Make sure you know where your seed is coming from. If you are using a mystery seed, there is a chance it is a poor strain. Don't assume that a few seeds you found in some really good pot will grow the same really good pot. It could, but it could likely grow a hermaphrodite. A hermaphrodite is a plant that has both male and female characteristics. Hermaphrodites cross-pollinate themselves and as a result develop seeds at the expense of potential bud. More on pollination and plant sex in a moment. If you don't mind experimenting, then go ahead, plant any old seed, you might get lucky. But if you can't take unnecessary chances, get your seeds from a reliable source. Mail order seeds are available from dozens of companies all over the world. But be careful, laws regarding the sale and possession of seeds vary from area to area. Stick with a reputable company and buy more than you think you will need. Out of 10 seeds, expect only 8 to germinate. Out of 8 germinated seeds, expect only 6 to grow into healthy seedlings. Out of 6 seedlings, expect 3 to eventually become males. Out of 10 seeds, that leaves 3 healthy females. You may have better luck than this, but better safe than sorry. Germinating seeds is easy, and there are different ways to do it. Fill a small pot with moistened grow medium or potting soil and bury the seed three quarters of an inch deep. Applying a B1 supplement may help. Keep the medium moist and in about a week a sprout should appear. Another way is to take a dinner plate and lay three or four paper towels on top of it. Saturate the towels with tepid water, spread the seeds evenly about and place a few more towels on top. Saturate the top towel and place the plate into a plastic bag to retain moisture, but don't seal it. In a couple of days, germinating seeds will crack open and a sprout will begin to grow. Carefully remove the cracked seed from the paper towel and bury it three quarters of an inch deep in potting soil or grow medium. Keep the medium moist. Within a few days, the sprout will appear. The plant now requires light. While some growers believe plants will benefit from uninterrupted light 24 hours a day for the entire vegetative stage, others believe that plants will only utilize up to 18 hours of light each day and prefer to save on the cost of electricity. In this case, use a reliable 24-hour timer set for 18 hours of light and 6 hours of darkness. The light and dark cycle is called the photo period. It is important that the photo period be accurate and consistent. In several weeks, you will shorten the light period to 12 hours. Irregularities in the light cycle will confuse the plant and hinder growth. A fluorescent light will provide sufficient light for the first few days while the seedling roots. Seedlings can be placed under high intensity discharge lamps immediately after sprouting, but place them at least two feet away from the lamp and beware that small containers will dry out alarmingly fast under 8.